How you guys doing? This is Artie Savory and I'm here to give you guys my review of Grand Kingdom. For those who don't know, Grand Kingdom was developed by Spike Chunsoft and brought to us by NIS America. Um, the cool thing about this is that NIS was able to give us games like Phantom Brave for the PlayStation 2 and then also the localization of the Disgaea series. So I was really excited to hear about Grand Kingdoms coming out. Um, partly because I was able to jump into the beta phase of it, which was technically the light demo, and now I was able to really get the full experience of the game, which I'm extremely happy to share with you guys today. So let's actually jump right into this and let's have some fun. So the biggest difference I encountered coming from the light demo was the quest menu. It gives you your campaign, which is your storyline progression within the game. And from there, it's going to give you Versus, which is your online missions you play against other players within the game. And from there, it's going to be your single base missions, where it's going to be missions based on contracts you sign with other kingdoms. So who you decide to align with does affect the mission you can do. And the last is Travel, which is the free roam portion within the game, where you can check out different areas to gather materials and resources, and more importantly, level up some of your new troops as well. So kind of get into a little bit of the versus part. Um, who you decide to align with is a big deal. So your reputation with other kingdoms will actually exclude you from doing certain missions. And if the kingdom you decide to sign a contract with is in war with an opposing team, you won't be able to jump into any of those missions as well. But the cool thing is when you sign up on a mission, it gives you the breakdown of your content, field details, and also your completion reward. And then from there, you get to decide which troops you actually want to add into the game. And also what your starter items are going to be as well. And this is all before starting the mission. So this one is actually going to be a story-based mission I'm doing. Uh, oh, I admit, I haven't really done too much of the missions as you can see. And part of that's because I've been doing a lot more of the online play known as War. It's a lot more fast-paced and I pretty much enjoy it. But to give you a little bit of the story, it's essentially based off the 100 year war. So if you guys are not familiar with that, uh, it's really kingdoms are no longer fighting with knights. Instead, they're hiring a band of mercenaries to fight for them. In this case, you're actually going to be the player, you're going to be the leader of the band of mercenaries. So as you're playing through the story, you're actually going to have your allies that's breaking the fourth wall and actually talking to you. Me, I actually love that. The cool thing about that is that it's really engrossing. It actually gets me involved into the game and it actually kind of makes me conscious of the decisions I make while playing it because it will actually affect the things that they will say while playing the game. But like any other mission based game, once you start playing, it will also give you your completion objectives and also your figure conditions as well. But the biggest thing I kind of thought was really nice is it kind of gives me like a chess checker type feel, mainly because your markers is like a chess piece and every time you move, it actually takes up an action count. So you want to be kind of aware of that because typically if you run out of your action count, it's the end of the mission. I'm going to get into a gameplay for you guys and how the battles actually want to play out. For my team, I'm actually have an open formation and I'll tell you a little bit more of the formation after the battle. But the cool thing that I have here is you're actually able to switch in between your lanes so we'll utilize that as your beginning tactics to kind of make your way to get up behind your opponents to do back attacks and also increase your chance in doing criticals. Um, the tactic I have for this particular team is essentially pushing that front line. I want to be able to push my opponent as far back as I can. This will give me the opportunity to not only create a unique choke point, but for archers, you won't be able to run anywhere. But the cool thing here is after essentially my guys attack, or if I decide not to attack, they go into the guard stance. So in order for anyone to do real damage, you have to break the guard first. But the one thing that I think is also really dope is the magic here as well. So I can do spells and chain them up. It's like relentless magic spells there and instantly KO opponents. So depending on how you actually decide to move, not only just with magic, but also with actual attacks as well. 
and your opponents can do that as well. And that's essentially all based on that action gauge. So if you have a high action gauge, you still be able to chain in a lot more attacks. And honestly, that also will depend on what type of attack you're doing. So in this case, I'm about to start striking this wolf, and boom! Kind of took him out with the nice little finisher, but the biggest thing I want to note is that your attacks do also cause friendly fire, so really be wary of your positioning within the game. So if you're not, you can easily take out your guys, but also the biggest one, I mean, it can ruin your formation as well. And I think that's going to be a really big thing for more of the advanced play styles within the game. Now, here you kind of see everyone trying to get closer to the leader here. Now, when the leader uh, isn't by himself, you probably want to aim for him first. Partly because if you take out the leader, it makes harder fights a lot easier. Because it reduces the morale of your team. Like any army, take out the commander, they don't know what to do. And within the game... Take out the leader, not only does it lower your team's attack, but also lowers their defenses as well. So you definitely want to utilize that strategy as well. But since he's the last one, I'm just going to KO him and be in with the match. So every now and then, when you haven't uh, finished your opponent with your main character, if you have enough technical points, you can come in for this, this chance to actually do the final blow. So you won that. HP gets recovered and I've accumulated some technical points that I can use on the actual play field as I like to call it. But one of the things I'm going to do after this battle is actually switch over to a little bit more of the formation stuff for you guys. So kind of finish now all up. Let's go into the menu real quick. And let's do a nice little small tutorial on the formation. So this team, my Omega Force. They kind of have really open formation. They have no type of objects in here. So you can actually place up to four objects and you have your GP points, which kind of increases once you raise up your troops grade level. And as that increases, you'll be able to put down more and more objects. In this case, you can put down objects like flax to boost up team stats. You can do barriers and obstacles. And you can also put down traps as well. You can even do misleading things such as signs. And you can do that not only for your invasion formation, which is typically what you have while playing through the game, but also your defensive formation, which is pretty important. So if you're ever playing war, or you end up in a defensive um, combat scenario, essentially, you'll have two different formations that will switch out and automatically play for you. So it's really important that you try to come up with a unique formation for both the invasion and defensive side. So now some really cool things. I do also want to show a little bit more of that cool unique um, formation playthrough. But also kind of show you like as you're playing through the main portion of the game, you can do like your searches and stuff within it, pick up unique items, and those items you can sometimes use to upgrade your stats. That even in the field, there's also opportunities to do shortcuts as well. So, there's actually a lot of cool things within like the field play of the game that you can do. So now, going into a little bit of the characters. Um, one of the big things I spend a lot of time with is kind of coming up with those combos. So, as you're learning or as you're leveling up, you learn new skills. But, how you know they're actually going to work? You can go into training. So training is what I personally utilize just to check out how well the skills work and how effective my combos will be. And you can use them against different um, archetypes. So you have the armor, which is typically people who are guarding or your heavyweights. The logs are kind of like the perfect example of your normal enemies that have broken a guard and it has that juggling effect. And you have the higher sandbag, which is like your aerial opponent. So Doing the training is going to be really awesome and even beneficial. I personally love this feature and spend a lot of time um, in here after I acquired a new skill for my characters. So let's also get back onto the field and show you a little bit more stuff as well. There's a lot of cool stuff within it, but let's see. Uh, switching over to some actual gameplay. So this is going to be more of like some advanced tactics. Um, going back to that formation stuff that I showed you earlier. 
Um, this is my first skin I had from the beta, and we utilize more of the barricade. So I do this more so to create choke points. So I like forcing all my opponents to try to attack me by coming right down the center line. So of course I have my warrior who has a shield and I can kind of stun him off in a guard formation to attack and um, to essentially defend everyone being my healers, magic users, and archers because they have the lower health. But I did try to use that. But also a really tricky thing about it is that that barrier not only creates the obstacle for your opponents but also for you. So every now and then you actually end up attacking the barrier but it ends up becoming a pretty cool thing once you master it. And you can even use it as a part for an opportunity to channel like those magic, magic spells to uh, essentially leave their opponents off guard. So, saw me kind of defeat their leader, so now the leaderless don't know what to do and your stats are low. So now I'm just gonna like hammer them right now with all my attacks and they don't know what's gonna come to them. So, coming across with my character Draconius moving up and you have the opponent who's guarding but he won't be guarding for long because he's about to get obliterated with combos so definitely again that training aspect is going to be really awesome for everyone who's playing the game because you get to utilize that really well but again I mean like all in all this game has a lot of really cool features and it makes for a really fun play style when it comes to developing tactics within the game. So boom! Winner! Winner winner chicken dinner! So definitely guys, when you tell me about it, it's really dope and you even get to learn level up and stuff as well. So the verdict? It's a good game! Grand Kingdom gives a unique twist to the tactical RPG with the side-scrolling mechanic. If you're new to the genre or just a casual player of the game, it accommodates you. And if you're looking for more of a challenge or something fast-paced, you're given that with the online play. On top of that, it does give you the opportunity to come across a couple of my troops as well. But in all seriousness, if you guys enjoyed the video, definitely like. And also subscribe so you can get notified of future videos and reviews that I'm doing. And the biggest one, if you have any questions about the game, definitely leave a comment and I'll reply to you guys. So I definitely want to say thank you guys for tuning in and I hope you guys definitely pick up Grand Kingdoms. Other than that, enjoy guys.